Crazy day in the market today. We got squeezers, we got halts, T3s, T1s, T12s, you name it. A little bit of everything. And of course, the classic washout long. Stay tuned. What's up, guys? All right, so we got a little bit of everything today. I mean, this was crazy. I just can't imagine that they just literally just threw every single possible, you know, scenario that can happen in a trading day, and they threw it all really within the span of a couple of hours. It's just crazy. I haven't seen anything like that in a while. But before we jump into that, I just want to talk about two things. Uh, this I did get quoted on this cool fortune article and if you guys want to go and check it out it's uh the article by actually about the uh the elfin um the whole elfin fiasco here so check it out uh, you know I, thanks to uh fortune for reaching out to me and getting a quote for me and uh definitely appreciate that check it check it out when you guys got a chance and of course uh trade ideas is also having a, a test drive again they're a little uh you know um once in a while, they have a, like kind of like a trial, so check them out. Uh, link is in the description. The link is also in the description for the article as well. But uh, for uh, $8.88, you get to try out the full version of Trade Ideas for five straight days. I know it's kind of hard to see right now with this small window, but uh, the link will be in the description. I believe uh, it will start on April the 16th or something like that, but you can uh, sign up now. Uh, the link, again, is in the description. So let's go ahead and talk about Elfin. Long fin, whatever the name of this company is, who who cares at this point? It's been a total circus for the last couple of days. Uh, but who cares, man? Like I, the way you guys know, the way I trade, I just go in and out, take my money and run. I don't really care how these companies really are, you know, behind the scenes. We all know secretly that most of these small cap companies are total pieces of shit. And you know, we go into the market trading these things, knowing that. So there's really no point in dwelling so much about it, at least in my opinion, other than to just observe the price action, look at the volume, and just, you know, ride it until it lasts. So Elfin pretty much set up very, very well. If you look at the way it's been trading the last couple of days, it's been green for the last three days after a very epic collapse. And I believe this was due to a Citron, um, you know, bash or something like that, thing dropping from 70 all the way down to 8 and it was going to bounce at some point. I was pretty much waiting for this thing to gain some traction. And we finally got it yesterday and a nice volume. And this is the, long, the largest uh, volume candle. No, actually, almost the largest volume candle that Elfin's ever had. Um, but you can see that a lot of people jumped in. And the thing that's special about this is that although there's a lot of bag holders on the long side, there were so many people that were shorting on the downside. And you can kind of understand that a lot of people rightfully so would hold on to this short as a swing and because we understand that this thing dropped from 70 to all the way down to eight without a bounce you can understand that a lot of these shorts that were holding on to this didn't really cover yet because honestly to be fair to them they had no reason to the thing was going down it wouldn't bounce but the fact that there wasn't a bounce at all you know over the over the past uh two weeks or so that goes to show you that this thing was going to have some sort of short cover um bounce at some point it just needed a catalyst so we got one yesterday with the ceo going on cnbc making a total ass out of himself but you know people still got squeezed anyways um yesterday and today uh, i was pretty much looking this for this thing to gap up so let's zoom out and look at the chart and how it formed yesterday yesterday we saw this thing squeeze uh you know up to 22 here it pulled back and it didn't go down you, you can see that yesterday a lot of these shorts uh that thought they had a good entry here around this 22 area uh, was trying to ride it down every single time they tried to ride it down this thing held and defended view at multiple times and this collected a couple more intraday shorts on top of the swing shorts that were probably in from a lot earlier so you had you know double the ingredients that could be potentially fueling uh, the move today so this is why I was looking for this as a long despite the fact that this thing uh, was a bag holder stock Obviously, this thing tanked from a very high price, and it's, you know, well, well below where it was uh, at, at its highs. But 
just understanding the, the how this chart formed and, and how this thing did not have a single really any sort of relief bounce on the way down from 70 all the way down to 8. You better believe that at some point in time these swing shorts are going to cover at some point. And then you add in the intraday shorts that probably thought they were going to get this nice little uh, you know, 22 here. Uh, move back down and ride it back down to zero or whatever they thought it was going to go to. You know, they got stuck. And today you see the same thing. What is the premise of the washout long? The washout long is basically when the stock, you know, holds up very well, ideally gaps up, which this did. And it defends usually a prior support level. And then the shorts realize, hey, we're not getting the fade that we're expecting and this thing is going to rip. So this is exactly what happened today. So the levels that I was looking at was 22, 22, 5, 22 was the prior day's highs. And obviously the reason why this is so important is because this is the level where the best possible sh intraday short entry yesterday was. And so that means that every single sh intraday short, um, you know, above 22, 5 or whatever is technically down on their position. And then on top of that, you obviously add in the swing shorts that are probably in there at some point. They need to cover and take their profits. And then you got, you know, enough fuel for a move higher. And below that, 2022, 20, you got this pre-market support at 21, right? And then below that, you pretty much got a long way down. So 21 to 22 was the level where I was looking for a bounce on the washout long on Elfin. And I was fairly confident that if 22 held, it was going to rip because the shorts were going to freak out and they were going to push this higher, at least in the short term. Okay, and I mean short term, I mean like immediate immediate term like right away you get in you get the pop you get out okay and that's why i had so much conviction in this trade and it's like the same exact concept in every other washout long the same exact concept okay so 21 uh 22 and if it were to drop to 21 maybe i would take an ad there understand that the fact that this thing was at 25 you know from 25 to 22 to 21 it probably would bounce back uh, given the amount of shorts that were stuck yesterday, the amount of volume that traded. So below 21, it was probably a long way down. So below 21, that's probably would have been the absolute stop out. But you'll see in the footage that 22 was defended pretty well. And I did take some size on it. I was in 15,000 shares. And I know a lot of you guys in the comments are going to be like, well, dude, if you if this thing tanked, you would have lost like 20, 30 grand or something like that. Well, obviously, you know, I passed math. <laughs> So I, I, I know how to I understand the risk, but everyone, again, has different risk tolerances. And that was number one. And number two, it's all about having conviction and having the confidence in your system. I've been doing this, this, this style of trading for several years now. I've been trading for seven and a half years, uh, seven years overall, uh, you know, and I have confidence in my system. If you don't have confidence in your system, then, of course, you're going to start freaking out. But I have total confidence that I've done this trade multiple times as evidence of the fact that I've demonstrated this in my YouTube videos several times over the same exact trade, even in different circumstances, like obviously the washout long in the open, the halt resume washout long that usually happens intraday, and the little smaller regular intraday normal washout longs that, you know, not the halt, halt resume ones, but just regular, you know, tanks and, and bounces, they're all conceptually the same, right? They're all caused by shorts that are stuck and they got to cover their stock and, and it causes a bounce. And obviously you got the longs that jump in as well, adding some more, uh, you know, more fuel to the fire. So if you have confidence in your system, then sure. I mean, there's no reason for you to be freaking out. So when I see my, my P&L turn into a big red number, so while some of you guys might be scared of a, you know, negative 10K number, it doesn't really phase me. I've been doing this long enough to, to really not feel a thing, to be, to be honest at this point, because I have full confidence in my system. Now, not every single strategy is foolproof. So obviously at some point in time, yeah, it's probably not going to work. But statistically speaking, you know, we, this is a game of probability. So over a long, uh, long, uh, long period of time, over a large sample size, uh, I have full confidence that this uh, system will work an overwhelming, uh, overwhelming, lar overwhelmingly large number of times, as opposed to not working. So that's pretty much the premise of it. Now let's talk about the T12, which is uh, something that a lot of you guys are probably uh, thinking about as well. So the T12, the T12 is obviously uh, the, the SEC or NASDAQ or wherever they jumped in, they halted the stock because it's a scam, okay? So as we know, and I mentioned earlier in this video, every single stock that's a, almost every single stock, I don't want to say every single stock, but almost every single stock that we trade in small cap land is probably a scam uh, in some way, shape, or form or another. And 
as traders, we understand that the risk, there's a risk behind that. Obviously, there could be a, a halt at any point. It could be a news halt. It could be an offering, uh, you know, or it could be a T12 in this particular case. Now, how do you mitigate the risk of getting stuck in a T12? So, well, first of all, let's talk about what a T12 is. So, a T12 is, is a halt for an investigation. So, unfortunately, if you're stuck in this, this is and possibly could be uh, for a couple of days. It could be for a couple of weeks or it could even be a couple of months. So, as evidence from... You know, my own personal experience, you guys know that I was stuck in a DGLT hall for seven weeks. Uh, Dries uh, was halted uh, a couple years ago when it was at 120, and it resumed, I believe, two days later. Uh, RTNB was a stock that was halted just uh, after D DGLT uh, was uh, around that time, and that halted a couple days later as well. And also, um, RTNB halted again. Uh, second time around, it also took for a couple days and then resumed as well. So honestly, it's luck of the draw. I really feel bad for anyone that's got stuck in a halt. Uh, it's it's bullshit, really, honestly. But uh, unfortunately, as traders, we have to account for this. This is just part of the game. And you know, uh, I'm gonna go through ways to mitigate the risks of the halts. There's no real way to predict a T12, but just understand that um, the main thing. Is that the longer you expose yourself to the market, the more likely you're going to get stuck in some sort of bullshit incident. Okay, be it random news, be it an offering, uh, be it a, a halt, T12, 1, T12, whatever. Okay, the longer you're exposing yourself to the market, that means the longer you're holding a position, the more likely you're going to get I mean, that makes that's common sense, right? The longer you're just hanging out there, the more likely, you know, somebody's going to... Uh, you know, rob you or something. The longer you're hanging out in a shady area, a shady part of town, the more likely you get robbed, right? The same thing here. Like you're trading a shady stock, so the more, the longer you're holding said shady stock, the more, the greater the chance of you, you know, getting stuck into something like this. So my first advice to you guys is, I try to, you know, tweet out today, kind of in a comedic fashion, just to make light of the situation for some of you guys. I know it's a stressful situation, but you know, I, I basically said, look, you know, don't. Don't um, don't get dumped. wait for a dump. Don't get dumped on, which means that you should probably only take a trade when it's a grade A setup at this point because it's getting risky. You know, the higher the stock goes, the riskier it gets to trade. So you're better off just waiting for the solid washouts to get in. Don't chase it, and but and and obviously you know scalp the stock. Don't hold it because if you're if you're holding the stock, like I said, you're gonna get exposed and you're gonna get stuck. But if you're scalping the stock. You know, you're getting in and out. You know, you're in for a couple seconds, 30 seconds. It's less likely of a chance that you'll get out. And if you're not randomly jumping in and you're waiting for the grade A quality washouts, then you're going to get the immediate bounce anyways, which will probably get you in and out. You'll get your quick in and out in like 30 seconds versus if you just FOMO jumped in at any random point and you get stuck in a grind. You might be like, oh, you know, it's grinding up. I'm, I'm, there's no reason for me to sell. Uh, you know, like for example, uh, right here, if you followed my tweets around this time, I didn't even trade this move uh, after uh, you know I start after it started going up. I might have traded one of these wicks, but I didn't even trade this move. I was waiting for a dump to 25, which is where the pre-market highs was, along with around close to where VWAP was. I was looking for a, this thing to run to like 30, 31, which is the next resistance, and I was waiting for this thing to dump to 25. You know, get a downside halt, get a gap down, gap gap down, resume, and then 25 in, then sell 27, 28, or something like that, and bank off of that trade. That's what I was looking for. That is my creme de la creme grade A setup in this particular case. Now, if I just randomly jumped in at any point in time and be like, and been like, okay, I'll just randomly buy at 26 or something like that. Although you're up on the trade, you're exposing yourself to getting stuck in the T12, and indeed that's what happened. And if you jump in, you're like, oh, you know, it's grinding higher. There's no reason for me to sell. I'm up nicely. Okay, I mean, that's great. But again, is it really worth getting stuck in the T12? So my last advice to you guys, if you really have to hold, then hold with small size. Guys, understand the risks. If you're in with 100 shares and you get stuck in the T12, this thing ends up gapping down like, you know, 50, 60, 70 percent, which it probably will, unfortunately, um, barring some sort of miracle. Uh, you're only stuck with 100 shares and it's not the end of the world. So those are my three tips to not getting, you know, to, to dealing with these things because obviously a T12 can happen on these scam companies at any time. 
So there's you know no reason for you to just straight up not trade them outright because these are still opportunities. But if you understand, you know, number one, minimize your minimize your exposure to the market by you know just going in for short bursts in these in the form of scalps, you know, waiting for the the, the grade A setups, you know, washouts, get in. And number three, down, you know, progressively downsize your positions. As time goes on, the, the risk gets higher and higher and higher as, as the stock keeps ripping and ripping and ripping. You know, I'm sure it's probably capturing the attention of the SEC. Like, you know, they got a couple of noise complaints at the party. And the cops showed up once. The cops showed up twice. But the cops probably won't be nice the third time. They're probably going to tell you to shut down. So this is pretty much what's going on here. The stock's going higher and higher and higher. The SEC's like, you know what, I, this is enough. This is too much of a shit show. It's a, it's a circus. We're gonna hit the. We're gonna just you know raid the party and rain rain on their parade. So that's what happens. So as long as you know the stock's going higher and higher, you gotta just downsize and protect yourself. And that way, if you do get stuck, again, this thing is unpredictable. It can happen anytime. You do get stuck. Unfortunately, it's not the end of the world. So hope for the best, guys. For those those of you guys that are stuck, but just you know take my advice with a grain of salt. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into the live trading footage. All right, guys. We're all right, guys, we're going to pick it up right here. Just a couple minutes, uh, one minute, less than a minute before the market opens. And we're going to watch Elfin open and how this pre-market setup, as you can see, this 21 low, 22 uh, prior days highs are the lows that we are looking at, like I mentioned earlier. And we're going to see on the level two how this thing played out live. And of course, I also included some bonus footage, uh, a couple Big Mac scalps for a lot of you guys that want to see some smaller scalps where I uh, padded the wallet, so to speak, the, the, the trademarked Mad Ass wallet patters, the Big Mac scalps, a couple of those included in here as well. So let's go ahead and watch this, uh, how Elfin opens right here. You see it kind of hanging around, waiting for a dip, as always, no jumping in randomly. Again, always be mindful of the halts, the circuit breaker halts in this particular instance at the open between 9.30 and 9.45. The LUDP bands are at 20%. And uh, there's the entry. I did mess up here. Uh, if you actually slow down the, uh, the footage, um, let's go ahead and pause this real quick. I want to make a quick comment. Um, you can see that. The level two was showing 23 on the bid briefly, and I jumped, and you guys should see me on the off uh, on the bid now. The best bid at 23.50. I actually meant to put 23.20, and I fat fingered it, so I, I ended up uh, filling at 23.50, which is really stupid. Uh, that's a fat finger fill. I wanted to get filled closer to 23. So you know that was a mistake on my part. You can see that I uh, got a partial, and I decided to cancel it once I realized uh, I made that mistake. So now I only have uh, you know not the full 5,000 shares that I wanted. And I wait to see if this thing dumps closer to uh, 22. So I just want to take a starter there close to 23 just in case because there was a little bit of a stall there at 23. And now I'm, I'm happy that I didn't go for that full fill. Um, now I go for the uh, fill at um, 22s. Now we're looking at that 22 level. Remember that 22 level must uh, should hold here. This is a prior day's highs. You see the 22s kind of defend there. Now I got 10,000 shares on the 22. Now, still watching that level two, watching for the 22s to hold up, making sure there's a little bit of a wall at 23, and right now, I'm looking to see if this thing breaks through 23, and once 23 is busted through, that wall, 23 is busted through, then I'm, I'm good to go, okay? Still a wall at 23, but it's not really reacting too much to that wall, so again, 22 is that defend level, the support level that I want to watch. So not really that great of an open, to be honest. This is not the best washout long example. Uh, but nonetheless, it still worked out because, you know, as long as you believe in your strategy and you believe in the system and you know your supports and resistances and where they are, then you can play off of them and just, you know, be safe. There, now I take the tactical chase, the good old tactical chase at 23, and I, and I add to my position there. You don't see me do that too often, but once that 23 wall was broken, um... I added to my position there. Uh, now I got 15,000 shares again with that 22 as a stop. Still hanging around. 
it's still it honestly it is sketchy right here. It is actually very sketchy. Uh but I'm still confident in that twenty two level. The shorts are still you know, they're still stuck from the prior days and it's not showing any signs of uh you know breaking through twenty two just yet. And as long as twenty two holds the shorts are gonna get anxious and at some point they're gonna cover. So we're gonna see a, uh we're gonna see how this stock behaves right here. Meanwhile, Odin is absolutely just taken off and missed out on this one while trying to watch uh, Elfin at the same time. But but you can see that even though I'm in 15,000 shares, I was never really down unrealized a big amount. So I was never really that nervous in this trade other than the fact that the range kind of sucked at the open. I was expecting this to make a beeline toward 25, 26, the pre-market highs right away. So I could have banked like, you know, uh, whatever, $4, 3 $4 a share with a nice like 40 grand or something like that, 45 grand, quick couple seconds. But it didn't play out that way. So that's just the way it is. Just holding firm on that uh, 22. Now we see the rip. First time we see the test of tw uh, 24. You see me try to sell here. I fill some at 24. Got a couple of shares left. And I'm all out. So I'm all out at this point. $17,000 in profit. So you can see the time. Only 9.33. So I was in the trade for approximately three minutes. Locking in $17,000 with a classic washout long. Again, I sell too early. Uh, and the reason why is because I'm just too paranoid of the halts. Uh, too paranoid of the circuit breaker halts, uh, firstly. And also just halts in general. Uh, so I end up selling to really left my end table. You know, it's fine, though. I, I I do this with every single trade like this. I just get in, I get out, take my money. I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm just going to get in on the next dip, and you'll see me take a couple more scalps with a lot smaller size just to protect myself from all the nonsense I mentioned earlier in the video. So you can kind of see that, you know, once it hit 25, it dropped back down to 23 is pretty quick. So there's, you know, who knows? Maybe I would have hesitated on a 25 sell and, and missed the fill and then it dumped back down and I would have ended up selling at 24 anyway. So I, I honestly don't really regret selling at 24. I'm not sure if I got filled any, you know, shares above 24 or was it only at 24, but got the rebates too as well. So that was kind of nice. Uh, didn't have to take liquidity with 15,000 shares. It would have been a costly uh, ECN fee, but got the rebates on that. Meanwhile, OGEN back down. At this point, I'm focusing on Ogen a little bit here because Elfin. Honestly, I expected a lot more of it. Again, this is not the best, uh, not the best washout long example. I really thought it was going to go to 25, 26, which was where the resistance was, and possibly even make a move like go uh, run into a circuit breaker halt and run to 30, 30 to 31, uh, which was the next resistance level above that. But it's not really giving it to us, so it's kind of sketchy action. So I'm kind of glad I, I got out of it. Even though I didn't exactly get the top tick, uh, you know, where, where I could have potentially made, you know, 35 grand or something like that. But again, just to better be safe than sorry, lock in the profits and just uh, move on to the next trade. I think uh, there's a wash on Elfin at some point where I take another trade back again. And also take a trade on Ogen coming up soon as well. Some more technical analysis on the fly there on OGEN. Adjusting support and resistance lines, which is something I do multiple times a day. So sitting on my hands as always, waiting for the next wash on anything. We got a little bit of a dip here on OGEN. So I try to take a take a fill here on OGEN, only get a partial. At this point I realize the liquidity is not that great, not getting filled what I want, so I just end up canceling my order and it also looks kind of weak, so stalling out. So I cancel my order. Dumps a little bit more, I believe, after this. Tape looking kind of weak. Got a couple more shares here on Ogen. A couple more shares. 
not that much. You can see that I only, the first time I went for 5,000. Once I saw the tape kind of act kind of funky, there was no real bid support. I just, you see that the second ad was only with 1,000. So I only had one-fifth the confidence that I initially had on Ocean literally just moments before. So that shows you how my mindset can change on something based on the way I look at the tape and how you, how you read it. So when you feel that the tape, feels heavy and it doesn't look right you know i'm just gonna go in small if i take a loss it's gonna be a paper cut loss and it's not gonna be a major one not a big deal um i'm still looking for an elfin washout that's the stock it's holding up so you know i'm looking for uh, elfin to make a nice move uh back toward the uh, pre-market highs and possibly higher So a little bit of a dip here on Elfin, I believe, uh, take a trade on it. I bail out at Ogen for <laughs> chump change right before it rips like an idiot uh, because I wanted to focus on Elfin because I thought Elfin would make me more money on the next dip, which it actually did. Uh, but, you know, I end up, I, I couldn't watch both things at the same time at that moment. It's just too much going on. So I end up just piking out on Ogen. Unfortunately, this thing ended up going back to three. So I could have made like, you know, whatever it was, five, seven, six, seven hundred bucks. But uh, I wanted to focus on Elfin right here. It looks like it's about to wash out at some point. And there's the rip on Ogen. Now at this point, I'm feeling like a total fool. But whatever, you know, it is what it is. <clears throat> at this point, still waiting on that wash on Elfin. It's still kind of hanging around here. Remember, as long as that 22 line in the sand holds up, the shorts are not going to be feeling too good about themselves unless they got a top tick here on that pop. You see how every time it tries to go down, there's always some sort of bid support in the level 2 that keeps it up above this 22 level. And OJ, new highs. Making me sad. But uh, you see Elf in here. I try to take a, a little stab here at a long. Get in here. 2,500 shares. You see the difference in size. Uh, sizing parameters. 2,500 shares starter as opposed to 5,000 share starters and 15,000 shares total. So half size starter. And uh, you'll see that I still make a pretty good gain off of it. Again, instantly up on the position. Never really down that much. Already up over a thousand, lock it in. Just that's scalping 101, guys. Wait for the dip, get in, size appropriately, wait for the pop, get out, lock your money, and do that as long as it keeps working. I demonstrated the exact same thing on my last video, uh, with RKDA, where I did a uh, you know, that stock was a higher price stock. It was a $40, $40, $50 stock. So I was doing 500 shares with this one. It's a little bit lower price. So I was able to do a little bit more shares. But you can see the concept behind it. You get in on a dip. You can see that I had a good entry. I was never really down on the position. And we got the bounce. I took my thousand something bucks and pocketed it. Again, keeping up with the theme of quick in and outs, mitigating risk and minimizing market exposure. Scalping 101. You can go ahead and fast forward this. I believe I, I believe I make one more scalp on it. On a similar move for a similar gain.
and Ojen continuing to make me a very sad, sad person. But Elfin overall, you know, the range still not that great, right? I'm still waiting. I'm just getting in on the washes, getting out on the pops. I'm basically just long in the washes as long as 22 holds. But uh, you'll see that it actually does pull off a VWAP reclaim at some point here as, uh, again, the longer 22 defends, if you're a short, put yourself in the shoes of a person who's short this thing from the prior days where there was, uh, you know, was it 14 million shares of volume traded. If you were a short from the previous day, even if you top ticked at 22, you better be shitting bricks if you're seeing this thing defend 22 over and over again. We're already 14, almost 15 minutes into the day, and you better believe that if you were short, and if you're, especially if you're short size or something, you're like, man, this thing is not going back below 22. I better start thinking about getting out and heading for the exits. And once you got the shorts heading out for the exits on mass, then that's when you start getting the rips. So, Elfin, definitely, uh, it's holding up very well, even though it's not really that tradable in terms of range at this exact moment in time. Uh, but nonetheless, it's not really feeling comfortable at all for the shorts. So again, no trade for me. Um, I didn't have borrows on this today, unfortunately, so I couldn't short it. But thankfully, I did. it's good that I didn't, to be honest with you. Probably would have tried to overtrade this trying to catch the top or something. But uh, kept trying to long this thing only on the dips, just sitting on my hands. I've So far, I've only made you know three trades, three trades, three wins, and just waiting for the next washout, really, and, and, and getting in then, you know? There is a wash there on Ogen that I missed because I'm kind of, Looking at Elfin here as it's trying to <laughs> break out of VWAP pretty nicely. New high of day there, I'll go, there goes on Elfin. So at this point, the shorts pretty much, they're like, I'm done. Uh, you know, <laughs> I can't take it anymore. And too many shorts decided to probably hit the offer and cover and, and, and hit market cover or something like that. And that causes a little pop. So, you know, if you were a long, small size and you held through it, congratulations. But again, again you got to be careful just because, you know, uh, there's always a chance that something can happen. So, nice move here overall, though, on Elfin. Just commenting on the, you know, uh, price action from an impartial standpoint. This is a nice uh, classic VWAP reclaim, essentially. Uh, a culmination of the shorts from yesterday getting stuck on top of the swing shorts I probably mentioned that are also, you know, holding this from... Uh, weeks before and also probably the shorts that jumped on and piled on today as well so you got three sources you got uh, you know three sources of the fuel on top of the longs too as well uh, so you got uh, all those people piling on and uh, you got this move so tried to get in there didn't get a fill trying to get the next dip there we go. There's a dip. Did I get filled? Yes, I do get filled on this dip. Basically trying to long it against pre-market highs. Small position. And again, not really down for that that long of a long of a duration. So I'm ready to up on the trade. You're gonna see me sell it pretty quick again for a quick couple bucks. I'm only in this trade probably for like a minute. Less than a minute, actually, trying to sell it already. And there you have it, guys. Out. Again, quick scalps. One minute trade. Now up. Over $20,000 on a day, and we look at the time, only 21 minutes has passed. So that's, I don't know about you, but that qualifies as a pretty nice day to me. Uh, so this thing is continuing going to highs, but again, just playing it safe, taking my profits. No regrets, no FOMO. I'm not going to chase it back just because, you know, like, ah, I sold it too early. I got to jump back in, you know, and, and, and chase it, and, you know, it's going to go up. Look, at this point in time, this thing probably is going to go up. You know, the next, the next uh, big resistance even though I have some lines there drawn, the next big resistance is at 30, 31. So the shorts that shorted this thing and got 
the, got stuck in the T12, you guys got bailed out big time because this thing was probably going to rip you guys another three bucks a share. And, you know, depending on your size, that could be pretty bad. So be thankful that the stock guys are smiling on you. Uh, but, you know, you got to deal with uh, the overnight fees and all that, too. So in the end, you know, nobody might win. But that's just my opinion with the halts. It's just better off not to to take every single preventive measure possible to not get stuck in them. If it, that means piking out and selling too early and, and sizing down so small that your gains aren't that much, then so be it. At least it's better than, you know, sleep like dealing with sleepless nights until this thing resumes for God knows how long, right? So the best we can do is take preventive measures, right? Obviously, anything can happen anytime. You can take the most, uh, you can take the most precaution, as much precaution as you possibly can, uh, but still could get in trouble. But you know, if you do everything in your power to limit the risk, you know they say luck, pre uh, luck favors the prepared, right? So if you're prepared, you're increasing your chances of being lucky. Right. If you're going to cross the street, if you look both ways, you're less likely going to get run over by a car. Now, obviously, just because you look both ways doesn't mean some maniac might not just turn the corner at like 100 miles an hour and just run into you anyways, even though you took the precaution of looking both ways. But you know what? At least if you look both ways, the odds of you getting run over are substantially less. So that's the same thing here. I feel like if you do what I said earlier in the video, you know, mitigate uh, mitigating risk by downsizing, you know, smaller durations of trades scalping waiting for the grade a setups you'll feel a lot better and your your account will thank you as well so we're gonna go ahead and play the rest of this video into the halt so you guys can just watch it for entertainment purposes i'm i don't make any more trades at this point uh we'll just watch elfin as it makes its move and uh culminate in the dreaded t12 Again, no washout, no trade for me. This essentially, this this uh, concept essentially traded, uh, prevented me and saved me from getting stuck on the halt. No FOMO, no chasing, no washout, no trade sitting on my hands. So let's go ahead and watch the final 30 seconds here. I believe this halts at 10.01. So you guys can see how the level two just reacted. And I believe that's it. T12. And you can see the H on the level 2 right there signifying that the stock has been halted. 
And unfortunately, you can tell by the level two, you don't see that stacking action on the bid. It's not a circuit breaker halt. It's not the halt of the circuit breaker variety. It's the dreaded T12. So, sucks for all you guys that are stuck in it. Hopefully, you guys, you know, live to fight another day. I truly wish the best for you guys. As somebody who's been stuck in a T12 before, it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of anguish. Hopefully, you guys can, you know, take my advice and... If you somehow survive this, you know, episode, uh, you take my advice and apply it to your next, uh, your next trade, and you hopefully won't have to experience it again. So that being said, guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. As always, if you enjoy my content, which will always be free, you know, this is my gift back to the community. Like I always say, always like my content will always be free. No subscriptions, no bullshit chat rooms, no bullshit DVDs, nothing like that. You guys know I don't believe in that shit. I believe that information and knowledge should always be widely available to everyone. You know, I will always keep doing that as long as I, you know, have time to do so. So, as always, guys, appreciate the support. Like, share, subscribe, comment, you know, spread the word. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.